beautiful voices today who feel comfortable sharing a few words. We have a wonderful opportunity to capture it. And to, um, Let me know if you don't want to be videotaped. Yes, absolutely. If folks are not comfortable being in videotape or photographed, we want to honor that and respect that, okay? Yeah, I'm just shooting the speakers right now, so no one in the... So I wanted to um, take an opportunity after folks get something to eat that if, if folks would be interested, because I know we have some amazing activists, heroes and heroes and pioneers and just all around ass kickers who have made a difference in our history and have led the way. Um, I want to also create some space for folks who'd like to come up and share a few words. Um, so Alicia will definitely be the first one. <laughs> Welcome. Welcome, Felicia. Thank you. No introductions needed. Amazing. Thank you. This is the second time that we've had this, right? Mm -hmm. uh, there was a country, a visible down somewhere in the south of the market. I'm your, I'm your full-on anti-fascist. 
I'll just close this. LGBTQ, people of color, immigrants, labor, and Democrats. Five fingers make a fist. Yeah.
please support Open House. Please spread the word as to what a great organization it is. And uh, well, I hope next year at this time that there are more of us here and truly pick up a newsletter. I like to pass them out. They're down at the front desk. Take copies and leave them where you think they'll do some good. If you look at the calendar, hmm, anybody with Anybody that's been around at all will recognize that this is probably one of the best clubhouses, not just in the city, but anywhere in the country. So thank you for your time. Thank you. Thank you very much.
I just wanted to um, tell you guys about this trans woman named Sir Lady Java, and um, she's still alive. She's about 80. She's a black trans woman from Los Angeles, and she was a performer um, in Hollywood. Um, she was like the darling of the celebrities, and in the or in the 60s. She fought with her ACLU boyfriend to get the drag laws changed so that it wasn't illegal to cross the dress. The police used to arrest you on the streets if they caught you and beat you down. And so she fought to get that changed, but she's not sort of in the LGBT history books. Hmm. Black trans women, not in the history books. Um, so I just want, I'm just saying, I just want you guys to recognize, know that name, and know who she is, and she's still alive, and she does have a Facebook page, so. Say, say her name again. It's, she used to go by the professional name as Sir Lady Java, but she's just Java. But her Facebook page, I think is Sir Lady Java, or Lady Java, one of the two. So maybe you could reach out to her, because she's one of our founding mothers, there'd be no Sisters of Perpetual Indulgence without Java, who fought and made drag legal. So we just need to keep that in mind. Thank you. Oh, and I wanted to say one thing about Open House, too. I was, um, I've worked in social services for the last 20 years, and um, um, this place is good. I, I agree with Bertie. This, this, uh, the folks here are good. I was skeptical at first. I'm a black trans woman, so I'm used to be getting the fuzzy end of the lollipop after it fell in the sand. And I'm like, the, the, the lollipop fell in the sand, and they were like, I want it. So that's why I'm used to being treated, so I was very skeptical when I first came here because I didn't think that um, there was really any patience and love, but, but there, there is. This is a lovely place. Hi, I'm Lee at the Lake Ann Man in AU. Um, I, I'm from the other coast. I've been here since 85. And I have a lot of different interests and I've learned a lot about a lot of things. And, you know, like what someone just said, uh, I think it is important to pass on what we know to the young, to the next generations. Um, one of the things that I was raised with. Um, long before I had any conscious awareness that um, you know I wasn't that I was really a, a guy who was in the wrong body, I was raised with a lot of public television growing up. In addition to cartoons and junkie shows, I also watched like real good stuff. <laughs> um, well, actually, some of the other stuff can be good because you know, it makes you laugh. Laughter is good medicine. I'm but a car. <laughs> <laughs> Not that joke. Um, but I was out of National Geographic, and I started from a very early age. I was first starting to read, um, getting like a big interest in dinosaurs and ancient civilizations and ancient life forms and how everything started. You know, the Earth, the planets, the stars, all that stuff. And you know. As I read more and more over time, and you know, I took like, anthropology courses in college and, and all this stuff, you know, um, I got more of an awareness and more of an appreciation of the fact that like, no matter who we are and what body we're in, where we came from, we've got spots or stripes or have, uh, you know, um, only um, one leg instead of two or, you know, um, came from a family that only ate spaghetti for dinner or whatever. <coughs> We're all human. You know, we all have a lot of the same DNA as our ancestors and our cousins and prim prim other primates that are living now. Um, one of my big dreams, it's my bucket list thing, is to go on an archaeological dig. Um, dinosaurs, trilobites, doesn't matter. 
you know, if I could go to East Africa and, and learn more about uh, human evolution, but we're all human beings, you know, first and foremost, all this other stuff. Oh, that's another thing. Um, about seven or eight years ago, several, many years after I started transitioning, um, I started doing a lot of reevaluating of like my beliefs, how I see the world, how I see myself, and I started another coming out process. I'm an atheist, and um, I find that even though there are so many things that I see that we have in common, I find myself alienated from a lot of people in our community, in the queer community at large, et cetera, et cetera, you know, humanity. Because so many people, you know, are raised with beliefs that to me just seem so outrageously ridiculous. Um, you know, written by people like thousands of years ago that say, okay, these people are not really people, those people are sinful, these people do this, that, the other thing, stone them to death. And I go, you know, I can't believe in this stuff. I just can't, you know? My big thing is love is love, you know, and we're all human beings. Um, I try and pass on. I, I try and pass on what I know from the next of my family, including having lived in the Middle East for a large moment and did studies in a place I'll never go back to in Jerusalem uh, for obvious and not so obvious reasons. But anyway, I'm really glad this place is here and I'm glad you're all here. Thank you. Thank you. Everything 
in me, but what I was supposed to have in me. And when I got here, uh, I finally found a doctor that would re re reverse everything they did. And so, uh, because I remember uh, when I first met you in 2010, I was going to the, um, the seniors, uh, recreation, the senior center, Castro Senior Center, and I met Michelle. She was, uh, she had a, uh, she uh, created a, a, a gay group for everybody to everybody to uh, go to, and that was the first time in my life I was able to talk to somebody. They didn't look at me like I was a freak or something wrong with me. So I was like, "This place is here. It's helping a lot. It's making me feel good that I'm not a monster. Everybody trying to make." And I thank Sylvia. Sylvia was the second person that helped me. And so I know I'm safe here. So. Would anyone else like to say? Oh, Red. Yes, I mean, I started cross dressing when I was about two or three because uh, oh. where that camera? <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Mr. DeMille. <laughs> and uh, I wouldn't get dressed. My mother was a school teacher. I'm from a colored family, black color, on the south side of Chicago. And uh, she, she was getting stressed and working in the black schools with 40 or 50 students in the class. The teacher's a teacher. And I made her life more miserable by not getting dressed in girl clothes, so she had to finally throw out some boy clothes. And I had to wear special shoes, which were very sex ambivalent. They could be anything. And I always was wearing men clothes, boy clothes. And uh, I just went through life with my struggles. Race struggles, gender struggles, the fact that I'm an artist, that's the third thing. It just pushes you out, you know, because you have to, you're seeking all these things. And I lived for years working normal ways, living in one room somewhere. And I did, I managed to write 70 books, and they're all up on, um, I was trying to get them all up online, because I gotta get them in, onto disc, and then into, and I can't figure out Amazon. It's always crazy. But I had this beautiful black lady struggling to become a professor. And she'd come out from Rutgers to interview me. Went to the Bancroft Library that's got my uh, collection out there. So I know I'm kind of steadily making progress, but nobody knows me. I mean, nobody in this room hardly knows I'm a writer. I have a painter. So. And uh, this uh, Mexican, half, half uh, mixed race brother out of back east said it's because I'm on the cusp of gender, sexuality, uh, race, and all she says is too much. It's too much and the publishers don't want to touch it. And I'm dizzy white lesbians that commanded the literary field for a while. They don't want to touch it. And I had this Jew who published me and I dearly love the man. They said all kind of horrible things about him. Richard K. said, but I dearly love him. He published in New York Post eight books of mine, which are still circulating, really cheap, because he published so many. And, uh, but the busy days would not give him any play in their reviews and newspapers for publishing. And there's a lesbians and trannies, all kind of people he was publishing. But they would not uh, give him no credit because he was a man. And they, there was this feminist shit. So I'm a total feminist. I believe in women power. I believe in trans power. But I'm telling you, they can. some people can block your way. Who's got the microphone? <laughs> Who's got the world walking out of my performance? <laughs> So anyway, it's been a real struggle. Your own people don't really help you. They'd be at you, at I know, K sometimes. So this is an amazing endeavor. 
It's like some people put up a gigantic prayer, and this is coming to fruition. I remember being in the raids, the barroom raids in Chicago. I remember police going back and forth out of streets in New York City, New York City. This, we have come a long way, and we need to keep it together. We need to fight together. So I'm glad to be part of this community. I believe I have been accepted next door. Am I right? I think it's looking really good. Well, they're all telling me I am. <laughs> Let's see what I see my body laying up there in my bed, which the lot of says you go by me. Then I will go. It's true. So I'll come back next year. Which <laughs> <laughs> all right. oh, Red Jordan Aroboto. That's my name. And people say, why are you so egotistical? Every time you introduce yourself, you all say your whole friggin' name and say, oh, you written all this shit. No one else is giving me publicity. The day I get publicity, I'll probably just say, I'm red and pass the microphone. <laughs> right now, I'm the only person giving myself publicity. All right, where? Where's my little person there? Thank you very much. Oh, sorry. Sorry.
way back and stuff. But I don't, I didn't see that it really happened. I think it's what the image should say. So I think we have a full group here. Just besides, if, besides having food, I think the transgender support group. And I'd like to start. Thank you so much. And so most importantly, being um, healthcare. Um, I am a veteran, and I'm so thankful for Tom Waddell that he was a Navy veteran. But as a veteran, I can't go to the VA hospitals. There is a culture, and I, I think you are a psychologist, you work at the VA. So we are running away so fast and returning to our community trans health clinics. So they were the ones who saved my life. When I had diabetes, they were able to catch it. So um, I think that's what I really need. As I get, I'm 57 now. I'm going to be 57 next in two weeks. I think for my birthday, I'd like to see if we can start trying to support those. All right. Thank you so much. Girls, we heard that. We have a sword now. Thank you. Thank you, Sophia. That was wonderful.